Why was Dynasty Warriors 6 afraid of Dynasty Warriors 7? Because 7, 8, 9. <laughs> oh, I, I guess not. <laughs> Absolutely everybody was, and still is, talking about Monster Hunter World. It was Monster Hunter's first foray into a true open world, and it turned out a treat. But waiting in the wings this whole time has been another series pushing itself to new limits. And that's Dynasty Warriors. The ninth main series entry has plopped Dynasty Warriors right into an absolutely massive open world. And prior to release, I was crazy excited. I had no idea how they were going to translate the traditional Dynasty Warriors gameplay into something that takes place in an open world. And now that I've played quite a bit of it, I sit just about where the Metacritic score does. Reviews have been deservedly middling, and that's where I am on how the open world gameplay turned out. And one of the reasons that this review took a little longer than expected comes down to this next little bit. And fair warning, what I am about to talk about is exactly what tarnished the game for me in the end. Once you realise you don't have to do any of the actual Dynasty Warriors stuff to move on, the game becomes kind of dull. You don't need to take on armies and watch the flow of the battle, or do anything other than the current objective, which 9 times out of 10 is nothing more than kill that guy. Even new mechanics introduced can be completely circumvented. Every hero has a grappling hook which can scale any wall. What should be an epic battle to take over a castle is nothing more than vault over the wall and make a beeline straight for the guy in the objective. At first, I was playing the game how I imagine it was intended. You do things like break open the gates to let your army in, and take camps and other strategic positions out in the world to advance your army forward, defeat smaller named bosses to eliminate threats, and all this stuff that actually makes the game fun. But then you realise that you don't need to do any of this. You can just kill one guy and it's over. They mark the objective on the map for you and everything. It's a real shame, but I don't think they did it this way by mistake. Not exactly. What I meant to say was I know why you can just rush the next objective to move on. It's because you'll be doing these chapters over and over again to play as different characters. You often get a new perspective and sometimes new content, but a lot of the time you'll be replaying the same or similar battles just from different sides of a coin. It makes sense that they would give players the option to just rush through these to get the precious story cutscenes that Dynasty Warriors does so well. It's a shame that this is the design they landed on. It would have been tough, but I'm sure there was a better solution to be had. You can participate in all the epic scale battles and gameplay that the series is known for, but I tell you it's really hard to turn off the urge to just rush the boss like you know you can. It sucks the fun out when you know it's not necessary. And before I knew that, I was having a blast. I couldn't put the game down for the first 10 hours. Slowly but surely though, my interest began to wane as the massive open world feels as if it's shrinking. And come to think of it, this isn't my only complaint. So where do I start? The voice acting is atrocious, the game doesn't look particularly pretty, neither in art style nor from a graphical standpoint, and the combat doesn't feel all that great. There is one thing I noticed that never bothered me though, the open world itself. It's really empty, there is very little to do in the grand scheme of things, but they did try to model China from the time period accurately enough to create the feel of it, and I imagine that Three Kingdoms era China was quite vast and relatively empty. There are still plenty of castles, camps, towns and other things in the world, but it's far from being a fun filled toy box like some other open worlds out there. And Dynasty Warriors 9 is far from being the worst in this regard. There are plenty of other emptier open world games. The other stuff I mentioned also didn't really bother me that much. The voice acting is pretty bad, sure, but Dynasty Warriors is hardly known for top tier voice work, and there is still worse out there. The look of the game could have done with some more refinement, but it's perfectly serviceable, and with all that out of the way, it's time to talk about some of the good things. 
If you forget what I told you about just rushing the boss, the game is actually a truckload of fun. In that first 10 hours or so, I was just wandering around taking castles, which opened up discoveries like new vendors and constantly stopping to beat down some enemies who'd set up camps outside my towns and castles. I was having the time of my life. The crafting and upgrade system is pretty good too. There's plenty to do there and every character appears to be able to wield any weapon, opening up a world of possibilities. I wouldn't say the combat is incredibly fun, but it's serviceable. Dynasty Warriors has done better in the past, but this system is just fine. It's less frustrating than Hyrule Warriors, for example. Without a doubt, the thing it gets the most right that Dynasty Warriors always seems to get right is the story. It's a fantastic interactive retelling of real Chinese history. It follows the romance of the Three Kingdoms to a T, and it's a brilliant period that doesn't get a lot of attention. And all this really just leads me to one last question. Despite everything, I am still happy to recommend Dynasty Warriors 9. Maybe not for full price right now, but it's still a lot of fun if you ignore the main objective. It falls short of being ambitious, and I'm not so sure how well Dynasty Warriors made the transition to an open world, but with a few tweaks and some optimization, it could truly be a great game. Just sit back for a little bit, see what the future updates bring, but if you find it on sale for a good price, I'd say go for it. And something else you should go for is definitely the like button below this video. You can also subscribe to see more content like this, jump down into the comment section and let me know what you think of an open world Dynasty Warriors. And if you enjoy my content, you could consider supporting the channel via Patreon or by using the links in the video description. Other than that, I'll see you all soon.